This is FYI, conversations with interesting people about fascinating projects happening in Ohio. I'm JT Burcham and welcome to FYI. Today's interesting person, Dan Coy of School Ministries Ohio. Uh, Dan, how you doing today? Welcome, sir. Doing great, JT. Great to be with you. Hey, you're talking to uh, the Miami Valley of Ohio, uh, Dayton, Cincinnati. Um, I bet you you are doing some ministry in schools in our area. Is that true? It is. All over the state, 88 counties. We are spread out everywhere. And since 1991 across the country. Uh, but uh, I'm happy to report Ohio is Mecca for release time Bible education. There, there's no one even uh, remotely close in reaching schools. That's so cool. Okay, yeah. so for those uh, just tuning in and like me who don't really know, what does School Ministries Ohio do? What 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 what's the uh, what's the mission? Yeah, the great great question. We help communities start, grow, and sustain release time Bible education programs, really that bring hope and truth to public school students during their school day. Okay, so. I think I understand this is a take them off campus kind of Correct. ministry. Yes. Yep. Okay. In 2014, we passed legislature here and uh, we were able to get three things uh, re recognized. They were already a platform from the Supreme Court uh, way back in the 50s, but uh, it has to be uh, a legal location, which means not on school property. And then it has to be uh, self funded. So we don't use tax dollars or government funding, and then it has to be parent permission. Those are the three prerequisites that make it legal. Okay. Now, you mentioned this has been going on for how long? Say that so, again. The first one we can tell, best tell, back in the histories, you know how things go. Uh, early 1900s, about uh, 1913, 1914, Gary, Indiana was the first place where there was a school executive uh, that had one of these programs and did it successfully. And since that time, uh, of course, all the way up until present time, uh, it has been happening. And so we have programs in Ohio that legitimately are 100 years old, 10 decades in a row. They've been meeting, gathering, taking students off. And, uh, and then in, in recent history, you've heard a lot more about it because what we call the sleeping giant uh, has, has come up in the uh, there's a lot of people talking about it, but it's really about knowing your options within release time Bible education. You got to know your options or it can uh, it can really mix things up for school systems and providers. OK, when you say know your options, yeah, what there, does that mean? Yeah, it, it's a it's a great thing to dig into. Uh, I, like I mentioned before, since 91, uh, 1991, we came into this. Uh, with trying to gather people to talk about it, because many people were doing it in their communities. They were offering a Bible education to kids. And uh, as you might guess, it's kind of like herding cats. Uh, they're, they're, they're everywhere doing all kinds of things, and there wasn't a whole lot of unity, it seemed. But uh, in recent history, we've, uh, we've been able to, to gather people and talk about things, come up with systems and templates uh, that help not only uh, school boards know their options, but superintendents to be well advised, also principals as as that follows suit, and then right on down into making parents aware, uh, along with their pastors and communities. But uh, knowing your options is really, uh, there are some programs out there that, that do cost a lot of money. Uh, they might be more like plug and play uh, and uh, and, and, and then there are others uh, like our own. We promote uh, scholarshiping. Uh, we help to evaluate and to do um, kind of a systemized testing ahead of time so we know who we're talking to and what the opportunities are so that once we get the ball rolling, number one, it has to have a policy or should have a policy. And uh, I might say in recent times, uh, there used to be about 150 of those before legislature now we're over 400 policies in our state. And uh, so that's that's exciting. And just over 600 school systems, we're, yeah. we're, we're trying to get in all those. Yeah. Okay. So is this designed for um, high school students, elementary students? Do you do a little bit of all the above? How, how does that work? All the above, K to 12. 
Uh, I would say that there are many great parachurch organizations that tackle um, middle school and high school really well. And many of them operate right on the campus. Um, and then there are others that uh, try to hit the, the K through sixth grade. Uh, and many of those are after school programs. But as far as we can tell, legally, we're the only ones that provide uh, a legal option during the school day. We like to say between the bells um, during the school day where kids can come off campus and be devotionally trained in the Bible by an adult uh, in, in the nation. And so release time Bible education is a big deal. We really target K to six, but we have very successful people doing middle and high school. And I might add, in some regions, we're working on this to go across the board, but in, in a lot of regions, you can actually get credits in high school for these release time Bible classes. Imagine that. They can actually learn something from the Bible? It, it's tricky, but it's true. That's astronomical. I'm sorry, you're blowing my mind here. <laughs> that yeah, is cool. Option. That is awesome. I think there's a lot of history. I think there's a lot of science. I think there's a there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that really slips by unnoticed too much of the time. Ultimately, so. people uh, don't know what they don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so um, let me let me get this. I'm still trying to get my head around it. So, yeah, yep. you kind of help connect school districts with churches or Christian ministries, mm -hmm. and so you kind of help bring them all together and educate them all in the legality of what you can and can't do um kind of That's kind of right. the middle man helping okay all right i'm i'm, I'm yeah, catching we, if you go to our website schoolministriesohio.org you find readily that we educate communities to do just that know their options come together uh be legally supported uh, you know, well advised we equip leaders that's really what we're about is training leaders to have their organizations then um, offer programs. And so we encourage programs in every way possible, but educate communities, equip leaders and encourage programs. And so that's, we're really leadership training and impact on students, which, uh, you know, to be honest, our goal for our, our state, and then we work nationally in, in cooperation with many states trying to learn because we're number one in the United States. Uh, you know, with our 88 counties and now spreading into that, we're trying to impact all 1.7 million students uh, in a quicker amount of time. And then, as I mentioned, there's over 600 school districts, and we are just really intent on uh, on spreading and expanding and training leaders that can get that work done. Yeah, so cool. First of all, uh, I'm excited to hear that Ohio is number one in something good. That's yeah. nice. Now, how is School Ministries Ohio funded? Is, is there uh, are, are, you're getting big government grants for this? Um, oh, no, no, no. Uh, no people no are donating. Grants. We okay. uh, we are privately funded, and, uh, okay. and you know by intent, by design, and certainly to be legal, um, you know we um, are privately fundraising all the time, and uh, and just recently in Ohio, we have had to expand because of the requests and uh, the demand, if you will, uh, is really one of those things that uh, has, has added uh, some pressure uh, in a good way for us to expand our base. And so if there's somebody listening today or watching this, um, uh, you know, we have a match program right now. If you go to our website and just hit donate, whatever you're uh, compelled to give is doubled. Um, because we are ramping up for an, an almost an unprecedented, I think it is unprecedented school uh, season in the fall where we're going to be opening so many new programs. Um, and it, it's so exciting, but it is privately funded. Yeah, the, the yeah. money doesn't fall out of the sky. And uh, we certainly are not printing money. Uh, that, that would not help us at all. But uh, we are asking partners that care about kids that believe our nation needs to restructure the format of the foundational training. And uh, we believe that, that we have a part to play in that. Yeah. So cool. What a, what a great ministry that is because, um, you know, I mean, no, no question today's culture could use a little more 
uh, Bible class in it. A little more Sunday school, yeah. Well said. (laughs) If if the world would go to Sunday school a little more, we'd probably uh, make it a... I mean, in in essence, that's kind of what you're doing. Yes, you're taking to schools and really giving Bible classes and helping helping, um, students learn Probably some of them have never, never heard, never heard, never They're learned. Even been in a church, a lot of the kids we yeah. touch now, uh, in 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 reference and influence, uh, they've never been in a church. Uh, case in point, you know, we had we had a young guy ask if he could look inside a church, uh, and of course the pastor said yes, and went on in. And this uh, student ended up enrolling in one of these courses. His dad enrolled, gave permission for him, and uh, and and that this is last school year, not not a long time ago. Uh, he gathered him and some of his friends together. And by the end of answering all their questions, uh, we had a question to ask, which is is a prevalent one. Hey, has, have you ever asked Jesus to come into your life? And yeah. and he said, no. And I said, well, has anybody ever asked you the question? And he said, no. And uh, I said, well, would, would you let me? I was volunteering that day. I don't always get in front of these. I train leaders a lot, but I'm not always in the classroom. Yeah. But I happened to be teaching that day. And so I stopped and I and I named uh, the student and I said, would you like to receive Jesus? Would you like to be forgiven today uh, of all the bad stuff you've all, you've ever done? And he was like, yeah. And so <laughs> we prayed and he received Christ and we're getting great reports about that student and uh, how he is improving. And even his neighbors, um, there's been talk and, and some reports back on on uh, just things that are changing in this kid's life, recognized by the neighbors. So, that so cool. yeah, yeah, that's that's what we're all about. Case in point, it's changing a heart. And, yes. you know, we're renewed by what goes into our mind. As we think, so are we. But uh, there's a lot of stuff that needs to change about what's going in. Yeah, And uh, we're trying our very best to tell them the truth and to be a good friend. Yeah. You mentioned the website a moment ago. I believe that is school ministriesohio.org. Is that correct? correct. Okay. That is correct. Um, if folks are listening today and they sense your passion about your mission yep. of uh, supporting uh, students across Ohio, um, they want to get involved, they can go there and donate and have their donation matched. How long does that run for? You know, we're running that through uh, the middle of July right now. And okay. uh, as, as it stands, Ooh. And uh, it's coming right along. People are giving, and uh, we really do need that. That's a that's a moderate amount to do the load that we're doing, but we're very frugal. We try to put our dollars to work on the front lines, uh, not wasteful. Uh, we're certainly not gaudy uh, with with our spending, but we invest it right back in leadership training and the front lines of helping communities literally get their programs up and started and and retain a healthy operation. I'm going to ask, we just got a minute or so left. I'm going to yeah. ask you a tricky question here at the end. I'm ready. Do you, think, do you think there ever might be a day when the Bible and this class can move back into the school? Do you ever see that happening in the future? You know, I, I with God, all things are possible. So no, let me, let me yeah. say that. Because I, I guess think that was that kind of a question, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's that's where it's going to land because uh, in our own way of thinking right now, it, it uh, doesn't look promising in some cases. Right. But right. I do yeah. have friends that that's all they do. They work full full time in helping yeah. school board members get elected who can make good decisions that uh, serve everyone well. So uh, anything's possible. I pray that God uh, will establish truth even before he returns. But, but here's the good news. Jesus will return and every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. However that unfolds, you know, I'm not a prophet nor the son of one. But I tell you what, I believe that to be true, and that's why I'm giving my entire day every day uh, to helping kids get release time Bible education. Yeah, Dan Coy, wow. It's been so nice talking with you and getting to know your ministry a little bit. Uh, again, schoolministriesohio.org. Um, I, I hear there's a gift button there, so, uh, a give button on there, easy yep. to find. Right, right at the top bar, right in the middle. Just hit that <laughs> donate, and it'll it'll instruct you so well. It'll practically give for you. I bet you people can go there and learn how to volunteer and get involved, too. True. Yeah. That's it. We're looking for volunteers and regional coordinators and literally across the gamut. We're, we're opening up in 90 school districts in Northeast Ohio. 
That's wow. just that region. We have five regions. So you'll learn uh, when you come into that spectrum. Uh, we have a lot of great help there and can organize anybody's donations and of time or their money. Very cool. Dan Coy, schoolministriesohio.org. Thank you for your work. Thanks for being here today on FYI. Thank you, JT. 